Hello, my name is Lynn Chapman and I'm an artist working in England, in the north of England in Sheffield and this is my studio. And I use quite a lot of waste plastic in my artwork. I've been doing it for a couple of years and, and it's a way of just drawing attention to how much plastic we, we buy and then we just throw away, we don't even reuse it. Um, a lot of it can't be recycled and it just ends up in our oceans um, or burned, which is terrible for the environment as well. So, so I kind of use it in my work as a way of drawing attention to that. Um, I tend not to weave with the plastic, I tend to sculpt with it. So for instance, um, I made this out of plastic bags and you get some really beautiful colours in plastic bags. So you can get some lovely effects. And I've just for about well, less than a year, I think I've been working with Ron Shelton and making art hats. And so these are some of the ones behind me. So this one you can see, it's got a lot of plastic milk bottle tops in it, various other things. And uh, this is plastic string that I made and I'm going to show you how to make some of that in a second. And this one is the lids that you get when you get a takeaway hot drink. Again, with plastic milk bottle lids in the centres of them. And uh, oh, let's pop that on there. And this one's made out of just cellophane packaging. I like the way that looks when you look up the inside of it. <laughs> so, so I experiment with all different kinds of materials. And I've been experimenting for you with a bit of weaving because it's not something I normally do. So I made with the little placemat like you've been making. Um, and I incorporated some of the plastic string. So you can see the, the these bits are just the same as you've been using. But the string, I've kind of wound it through before I started putting the colour in. And I thought it would be fun to experiment with what, what would happen if I took the string outside the edges of the loom. And I really like that because you get this extra quality to it. And I also incorporated some just cheap bits of plastic. I think they came off of uh, plastic milk bottles actually. Um, and just tied them on in knots and frayed them just to make them a bit more interesting and wove around them, just wove them in. So it just again adds a little bit more texture and colour to the mat. So I'm going to show you how to make some plastic string. It's amazingly strong and it's really easy. So you could use just any plastic carrier bags, but the kind of the ones that are you know reasonably strong are easier because the plastic when you cut it into strips isn't going to stretch so much. And it's quite nice to use two different colours to twist together. So I've just got a, a white one and an orange one, but I've split them up their side seams so as you get one nice big piece of plastic to work with. I've cut a few strips off of those plastic bags. Um, they're about an inch wide, but you know, it doesn't really matter too much, but that works quite well, I've found. Um, so what I've done is I've taken one of the strips and I've cut them, cut that particular strip in half. So we've got lots of long lengths, these are much longer, and then two short lengths. And the reason for that will become apparent in a moment. How we're going to start is we're going to take one of the short lengths and we're going to take one of the long lengths in the other colour and we're going to try and get a decent knot in the end. So it's a bit slippy and fiddly this bit but it's just to get us started. So tiny double knot. Give it a bit of a pull to try and make sure it doesn't go anywhere. Right, okay, ready to start. So, it's very straightforward. All you do is you take the one that's at the top and you twist it away from you. Then you swap to it with the other one and you twist that away from you. Then you swap it over again and you just keep doing this. You twist, swap. Twist, swap. 
and it feels a bit fiddly to start with but you kind of get used to it after a while and you work out how to hold it so that you get a good grip on it twist 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 swap twist 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 swap and you'll see after a while that you've got a length of string and you'd think it would all just unravel when you let it go but actually it doesn't so I'm going to twist this until we get to the end of this bit and then I'm going to show you how you join the new strip on so as you can see I've now built up a certain amount of string but I've come to the end of that short section of white now the reason we did it with a short section and a long section is because you don't want the ends to both happen at the same time. If you have two ends at the same time, then what's going to happen is you're going to have a really weak join. So at the moment, we're going to have only one of them joining. So I'm going to show you how you join the new piece in. So when you get a certain amount sticking out like that, you take, it's important that you take the long piece and not the short piece. So otherwise they'll just line up again <laughs> so we want to create a staggered end and you just took this new piece sort of in there a little bit and what we're going to do is just twist that in and i'm going to carry on now i'm holding it so it doesn't slide out now again this is a bit of a tricky bit because sometimes it does slide out and all you have to do is just do it again. <laughs> but if we can just get beyond the join. I tend to get a bit tangled up. So I'm just carrying on exactly as before, twisting, twisting. So it's a little bit chunky there. You can see where we've got the two pieces together. But... You won't even notice that once you've finished. Good. And I think we're more or less past the join now. And so now we're going to carry on until we get to the end of the orange piece. And because we had a long piece again, as you can see, we're going to come to the end of the orange before we come to the end of the white. And then we're going to do exactly the same thing again and just join the new piece of orange in by tucking it in just like we did with the white. So I've got to the end of the next piece. Now you have a choice. If you know that your string only wants to be as long as the end there, of course you've got your short piece. So if you join that piece in, they will come roughly to an end in the same place. So that gives you a completed piece of string. If you're not sure how long you're going to need, because one of the problems with the weaving is you don't always know how much you're going to need. What I suggest is that you get a clip, something like this. And what you can do is then just pop that onto the join and that will stop it unraveling because although this end doesn't unravel if you let go of this end it will and indeed they are very handy because if you just need to nip to the loo <laughs> and you don't want to put it down you need some way of stopping it all unraveling so that then means that you can have a look so if i bring in my my loom you can have a look at roughly Kind of what you're thinking of doing with your string and if you think mm, yeah actually i'm going to need a bit more you just cut more strips and you carry on but if you think that this is going to be yeah that'll be long enough then you just start with this one put it join it in and you'll get a nice neat end onto your string now i'm not going to keep going on forever i've got enough to demonstrate now what you do with my loom, I've just put an extra strip of cardboard. Actually, it's, it's bowed quite a lot, which is quite useful for me because it means I can get my string in. Um, but I put an extra little bit of cardboard there as well 
just to raise the string up slightly so you've got a bit more room to tuck your plastic string in but I would suggest that what you do is you design where you want the string to go and think yeah okay that's the sort of shape that I want and then lead with this end rather than this end if you're going to keep the clip on it to keep your options open you're obviously feeding the clip through is a nightmare but feeding this end with the knot through is not so bad and you just weave with it the same as you did with your other plastics you just go in and out and in and out and what you've got to do is just feed it through and move it around until it makes the shapes that you want it to make. It's a bit of a faff because it doesn't, because it, it's a bit textured, it doesn't go through as easily as just ordinary bits of plastic, but it's not too bad. So if I want to keep a loop, like I did on my one, do you remember, where is it? With my one, I had these loops where the string sticks out at the edges. If you want to do that, now is your moment. So when you come back, you carry on, but you don't pull it tight. So oops, you only pull it to the stage that you want it to be. And then you have to keep adjusting it as you go along, because it will kind of It'll go in more than you want it to, but you can put it backwards and forwards until you get it right. So as you can see, I've used the length of string that I've got to make a pattern. Um, because I've got a clip on the other end, if I thought I needed a bit more, I can just carry on, make a bit more string and you know move it around. But I'll stick with that because I don't want to be here all day. I just want to show you <clears throat> how to finish off the ends because obviously that's a bit ugly so you could just sort of like tuck that under and try and kind of keep it in place what I've done on my previous one whether you can see um so that's the front if you turn it over that's the end of the string so I've kind of put it on the wrong side and can you just see there is some thread tied around that to stop it unraveling and that's just a little bit neater and easier to hide um, so I'll just quickly show you how I did that I took undid the knot that one that we created right at the outset and you could just keep it with the single knot actually because that makes it easier to to hang on to and then I've just got a needle and some reasonably wide thread and I put a knot in the end and I'm just going to push it through and then just bind it round and round. So I've used bright coloured thread here but you could use, like I did the first time, a colour that's one of the colours of your string or it might be the colour of whatever you're weaving in between and um, so if I wanted it to disappear here I might use a, a blue um, it doesn't really matter just round and round till you've got it nice and solid and then just go through and tie a little knot with the needle like that. if you do that a couple of times that's usually enough to hold it in place just cast off and now we can snip that off and it's a lot neater so what I would suggest is that you just took that underneath and just try and hide it in amongst the weaving that you do to fill in and you can normally find a way to tuck it out of the way as I say like I did on this one I've even lost it now it's so well tucked in oh here it is yeah so I just sort of tucked it out of the way so you just then fill in the way you would do 
if you were doing an ordinary wave, filling your colours up to the edges. And that will hold the string in nice and tight. And obviously, you finish off the other end as well as this end. Um, and uh, and I hope you have fun with it. I think it's uh, I think it's really brilliant stuff. This string, I love it.